This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, you can see my screen and uh, I'm audible clearly. If not, please let me know. And you can also uh, ping me on the chat window uh, and I can see your question. Okay. And the agenda for today's discussion would be that we would understand the course syllabus better uh, today and we'll, we'll, we'll have your questions answered. And we'll be, and if we, if we get some time, we'll start on the basics of cloud computing today. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the course syllabus, uh, like it, this, will be of entirely eight weeks. Okay, uh, that's kind of forty to forty hours. Uh, we we are targeting five days a week. Uh, that will be nine p.m. to ten p.m. That's in the evening. We are taking up uh, this up this batch, uh, 40 to 45 hours, so five hours around five five to six hours in a week. Okay, the maximum the session would go till one hour 15 minutes, uh, daily basis, uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, weekends will be off, uh, so it it will be eight weeks. And the how we have like split the eight weeks, uh, cloud computing. We are taking up AWS here. Uh, Amazon uh, Web Services, and we'll be covering this around three to four weeks. So it will be a span of around three to four weeks, mostly three weeks for sure. And we can also uh, like uh, go into fourth week of, of discussing this cloud computing if you guys would need some more details for, about this. Okay. So to start with cloud computing, we'll, we are starting with very basics. So even if you do not have any background, of the cloud what do you mean by cloud and how we operate in cloud we are okay okay so you you have got yourself covered okay so we are starting with very basics to understand with what is cloud computing and why do we need cloud computing and why and how it is different than your on-prem environment in my first demo we did look into that we have different uh, service models like eas infrastructure service platform as a service and software as a service we'll go over that in detail to understand about it what is cloud computing uh, what's the various various different uh, various deployment models the, we have a uh, public private hybrid and community deployment models so this is like and we'll understand the major cloud providers out there in the market and so this is like a basics okay everyone kind of a it, it, this session would be would take around two to three days and this is like a basics that will uh, lay a good foundation for you guys if you are new to this cloud thing and after this we'll be creating an aws account everyone would have this aws account the one that i have here and everyone will start practicing here will 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 spin up instances as i'm doing it as i have done it right now so this is one of the instances that have spinned up for the kubernetes service i am explaining kubernetes from linux window from linux operating system we can operate kubernetes that's the container orchestration engine from, from uh, windows mac or any linux so i'm demonstrating using linux and i have also explained how uh, we work in linux in windows and mac so I'm demonstrating in Linux operating system here. So this is the uh, uh, window that I, I, I have here. So this is the same uh, private IP. We, we would understand what this private IP is. If you uh, uh, do like host name here, uh, if you type a command host name, you you would get that this is the host name. This is the private IP here, okay? So this is the same private IP 172.31.0.195. I have the same private IP, so I'm connected to the same machine. So we'll understand how to create EC2 instance. Basically, EC2 instance is your VM. Your, when you do virtualization and, and you create VM, right? So your EC2 instance is like your VM. So we'll understand how to create the VM and then how to go about uh, um, having your, for, for, for example, Kubernetes, how, how to go about creating your cluster and how to go about uh, creating pods and different type of services in Kubernetes. So we'll be doing everything hands-on here. We'll be creating instances and then we'll be practicing in the command line. Okay, that's how we will work. Okay, uh, to just go go along. So first of all, we will set up this AWS uh, uh, budget setup just to make sure that if we exceed on the AWS, because we'll be practicing a lot of stuff and Kubernetes is not free tier. So yeah, we need to have kind of a budget setup that will be alarmed. If you're exceeding a particular budget, uh, we'll be notified that yes, we have uh, we have exceeded our budget and 
uh, we need to take care of something. If there are some resources that are already running and that we, we do not need, we can stop those kind of stuff. We can take action. That's why we will uh, do this. Then we'll understand the core cloud concepts. What do we mean by high availability? Uh, what do we mean by uh, fault tolerance? Those stuff. Uh, a lot of details and we'll understand what this what do we mean by aws regions what this availability zone means and various aws services like iam identity and access management so that's the first thing we will set up if you look at my aws console i have logged in as the one of the iam user here rawson if i if i go to this aws service iam i have created one user there uh, so that's always the best practice we should not be using the root account uh, that comes up. Okay, so this is the IEM account that I have it here. And uh, I have this roster and user created and I have given this admin privileges to this guy. So how to do the, those kind of stuff uh, will be doing that. EC2 instance, how to, there are a lot of things in EC2 instance, how to create first, how many type of operating system we can leverage, what are options that we have, how to take snapshots, what is EBS, what is EFS. So those stuff, what is this private, public and elastic IP? Uh, and how to connect your instances remotely. What is the security group? We'll understand uh, the cloud main advantage is that uh, we need some kind of security, right? Security enabled. Uh, so the, how to enable security group, how to set up inbound and outbound rules. So those stuff, networking is a very important concept. VPC, virtual private cloud, uh, which user will have the access, which IP address will not have the address. So we can restrict the access in VPC while conf configuring something on the VPC side. We'll understand the serverless services like Lambda, API, Gateway, and SNS. So if things are new to you, so I'm just talking about that. We are covering a lot of detail here in, in cloud. Uh, and the most important for the performance engineers is that monitoring part. Uh, we have AWS CloudWatch and how to set up your load balancing and auto scaling group. Uh, automatically your your inst uh, based on the some requirement some if if we have hit some cloud watch alarm uh, so if cpu utilization has gone over 50 percent uh, then your new ec2 instance will have to be provisioned so those kind of setup we can do in elastic load balancer and auto scaling group and we'll understand this metrics dashboards logs alarms events uh, all are which are associated concepts of uh, AWS CloudWatch. AWS X-Ray is one of the, again, very important. So this is this particular cloud computing would take around three weeks of time, a minimum three weeks. We can also go to fourth week also. And then we'll understand the Linux command line. Uh, if someone is very new to this world, Linux command line, so we are starting from very scratch. So we'll be understanding at the end uh, what do, how to do cell scripting for performance monitoring. Suppose in your organization, if you do not have any paid tools, okay, and or infrastructure monitoring tool setup. So using native commands like your uh, top command, like, uh, or free hyphen it. If I, if I just hit top, I, I can get to see a lot of details here, right? I get to, I, I can get to see my CPU utilization. I can get to my memory utilization. What's the swap, but how to do a cell scripting, like for a test duration, I want to capture the CPU utilization and the memory utilization over a one hour of duration, right? Over the test duration. And I want to plot as a graph. So how to do that? So we'll be doing cell scripting. So cell scripting will help us in plotting the graph, in plotting the data points, in, in, and eventually it will help me in plotting the graph. And I can see how about my CPU utilization or memory utilization for the test duration. I can also go over, uh, go over and understanding the memory, how much uh, memory is being consumed and uh, those those stuff. So we'll be doing this kind of native commands and we'll be creating some some sort of cell script. Uh, that is very efficient when you're doing a load test uh, for, with any tool like JMeter or, or Load Runner, and to understand the server resources, right? We do need to understand how much is the server resources. So that eventually we'll be doing. But to start up with, we'll understand from very basics. We'll start from very basics. Uh, what is this? How to do di directory navigation? If things are new to you, right? So you you may not know. If I do PWD, it will give me the current working directory. Uh, P P PWD present work that right? if I do LS, so it will list all the files that I have here. 
So if, if you see that this is one of the VM I have created for the uh, Kubernetes session. So currently I'm taking a Kubernetes session. So I'm just having these files here, YAML files that I have here. So all sorts of activities uh, it starts from very basics, directory navigation to get to know about the system information. How much is the CPU? How much is the number of threads? Uh, how to install packages? Since it's it's uh, if 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 your VM uh, is a Debian uh, flavor of Ubuntu, you need to use apt apt get apt. Or if if it's it's having the CentOS flavor, you need to use yum. So those differences like those, you need to understand how to get about the hardware information, uh, user information and management. Of file and directory commands, so process management. So PS, if you do a PS, it will give you the all the processes that are running. So how, if suppose if we, if it's a web server or a application server, there are Java processes involved. So how to filter out to understand what all processes are currently running, and if you want to kill that particular process, uh, so how to go about doing that. So we'll be taking taking up these things Linux command line from very scratch. Uh, how to do networking how to archive a file like in windows we can zip a file right so in same thing for linux in linux we can archive a file and we can make that make that as a tar file okay how to do search how to do ssh logins file transfers so whatever we do in windows will map it that we can do the same similar stuff in linux as well uh, so if if you're new to linux so this is the thing for you to learn here okay and if you are uh, if, if you're good with linux commands so you'll be learning cell scripting as well so that's the uh, plan uh, for the linux command line this this would take around one week of time to to learn every command we, i'll be demonstrating all the commands in the uh, this instance that i have i'll create one instance everyone would have and you guys need to practice along with me Okay, uh, we'll understand then software architectures. What does this monolithic mean? What are the advantages, disadvantages of monolithic? The microservices we'll understand and how it is different than monolithic applications and where these microservices run. We need to use some, some sort of container engine to run these microservices to create the containers. And, and when in when we and when we have the containers, we'll host those microservices and we'll understand how to work around containers, how to create uh, your Docker images using Docker file, how to do that, what is Docker volume, uh, and to install Docker Compose, because if you have Docker in compose installed, and it's about the YAML file. If you know, if you, if you have the YAML file. You can build your application server, web server, and database server in just few seconds of time. Uh, it's just a span of time in between two to three, three seconds, your application will be ready. How that powerful it is, the containers. And as a performance engineer, that's the world going on towards microservices. And to run those microservices, we, we need containers. So we'll be learning about that. So the entire this container engine, uh, along with Docker and Kubernetes, that takes around a month time. So that is the, the real crux here. The Kubernetes takes the maximum time here, around uh, more than around two weeks. Kubernetes will start from very basics, okay, and we'll be demonstrating EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. We'll be creating cluster, and we'll be creating pods. Uh, we will understand what is Kubernetes first. What is the architecture of Kubernetes? Why do we need Kubernetes, first of all? Uh, Kubernetes architecture, uh, and, and then we'll be taking up AWS, uh, EKS. EKS is one of the services that we have in AWS that's called Elastic Kubernetes Service, and we'll be creating a cluster there, and we'll be practicing about all the Kubernetes commands, kubectl commands, a lot of them, okay? Uh, in in here, okay, in, as, far as part of the Kubernetes. So this Kubernetes session, along with Docker, uh, takes around a month months of time to take up all these things here. From here, from three, three, four, and fifth takes around a month of time, four weeks, and we'll be covering all the concept that is required for a performance engineer. What is a pod? How to deploy a pod? Uh, what is what? What do we mean by replica sets? What do we mean by deployment? What do we mean by services? There are three kinds of services, uh, node port, cluster IP and load balancer, how to set this up. And then at, and at the end, how to monitor the containers, right? How to monitor these pods, how to monitor the Kubernetes architecture. 
So we have this CloudWatch Container Insights. Uh, we'll be monitoring the Kubernetes objects from Container Insights. And then we have to scale up the Kubernetes automatically, right? Uh, the pods has to be auto-scaled and the, even the cluster has to be auto-scaled. I mean, the EC2 instances, the worker nodes have to be auto-scaled. So how to configure that, how to create YAMLs of that, on, on what all conditions are required, on what all conditions you will uh, you will scale up the pods and the instances, so all sorts of things, okay? So this will take around a month of time, uh, understanding the architecture, understanding the container engine, uh, we'll be taking the Docker engine here, container engine as, engine as the Docker, uh, Compose, and then the Kubernetes, the entire thing of the Kubernetes. So this will take around a month time, four weeks. So uh, three weeks here uh, on, on the cloud computing, one week here on the Linux command line. So four, four weeks, uh, four weeks here on the container engine, uh, software architecture, container engine, and the Kubernetes. And then we have a, a weeks of time here in this performance engineering in DevOps. Uh, so this this total of eight weeks course, okay. And here we'll understand uh, what was the situation before DevOps. I think yesterday you got a glimpse of that. That we have some. We started up with waterfall. We have then we shifted to agile, and now we have DevOps. Right. So what are different uh, life cycle of De DevOps that we have different phases. Uh, DevOps phases, CI/CD pipeline. How to create CI/CD pipeline? Okay, and how performance engineering exactly fits into DevOps? What all activities are there as part of performance engineering in in DevOps? Because that's that's where the world is going towards microservices, containers, Kubernetes, and DevOps. So that's and cloud. So everything. Uh, if you if you look at my first uh, first slide here yesterday that we started up with, that that's the that's the slide. Okay. So that's, that's where the world is going here. The world is going towards a uh, cloud. Everyone is talking about cloud now, AWS, Azure, GCP. So if you know one of the cloud services, you can very much understand the other, very well understand the other cloud services like uh, your Azure or GCP. You can relate things. All, all the cloud providers are developed in the similar way. So if you understand one, it's easy to relate others. Containers, okay, microservices, to uh, containers are the runtime environment for the microservices. We need containers to, to host microservices that, that we'll understand. And Kubernetes will play a very role in managing the containers. That's what we're gonna understand. And at the end, we're gonna end up with our DevOps. So this complete thing here, all the four topics, that's what the entire world is working on currently, the current IT world. So we'll, we'll be covering in eight weeks, okay. Uh, and if, if I look at the syllabus for the uh, DevOps part, so we'll be creating, we'll be uh, talking about all the theory part first, uh, the the how how performance engineering fits in DevOps, what is shift left mean, what is shift right mean. So this the meaning has very importance. You can do different type of testing. What do we mean by shift left? So shift left means what type of approach you should have in performance engineering to tackle any application which is which is which is there, which is implemented in DevOps. So what type of performance engineering activity that you need to perform? We'll understand that in shift left, shift right. What is what you need to do on the shift right? What do we mean by shift right? And then what is continuous integration? That's, that's when we'll hit the Jenkins tool here. We'll be using uh, as Jenkins tool as the CI tool. We'll understand uh, features of Jenkins and then everything will be hands-on. We'll be installing Jenkins on the EC2 instances. One of these, one of the similar EC2 instances we'll be creating, okay? Uh, that we have uh, EC2 instances. As 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 you're seeing here, one of there will be a three one one for the staging server, one for the Jenkins server, one for the production server. We'll be having three nodes, and we'll be creating a CI/CD pipeline. And you will see once the the code will be checked in, automatically your pipeline will be triggered. We'll create a pipeline to understand how things really flow, and 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 where this performance testing engineering comes into play as part of the testing. We need to create our job. Jmeter job to get the performance testing done as part of the DevOps. So we need to create jobs there uh, to get the test performance testing done. And we can just mention for any particular release of the application, if the performance test passes, then only it can be deployed to production. If not, it will not be deployed to the production. So the conditions that we provide 
as, as part of the CICD pipeline there, that's very important. And to how to configure the automated feedback, the email notification that we have. Uh, automatically, if the job passes or fails, you'll be notified. Uh, how to create Jenkins jobs, freestyle jobs. We'll understand that, how to create a pipeline, uh, scheduling the pipeline jobs with dependencies. So what type of dependencies would be there uh, so that the, the jobs will be triggered? So that we need to understand. And, and at the end, we'll understand how, how what type, what all AWS services are there for CI CD pipeline. Uh, Jenkins is a third party tool, okay? Uh, you see, I tool third party tool, but in the DevOps, uh, we have other kind of thing like code build. Okay, so code build we have we have different different kinds of services uh, that in house as part of the uh, like AWS, which can do a DevOps work. Okay, it it will it will behave. So there are various kinds of services. Okay, so we have code pipeline as well. Okay, uh, if you see at uh, code pipeline, so uh, this is the AWS services. We'll understand how things are done in AWS. If not Jenkins, how things are done in AWS as well. So we'll understand that part as well. So this will take a week's time. Okay, so the entire course is of like eight weeks. Uh, it will be full, fully packed eight weeks. Uh, you'll be lear learning daily uh, some new things. If, if you know some stuff, it's well and good. You'll be learning from very basics. Every every concept is, for, is covered from very basic, considering that people are new to this. They are very new to all the things, DevOps, cloud, microservices, containers, Kubernetes, DevOps. So that's this course is designed. That's how the course is designed from very scratch. So that's the uh, main uh, thing here. Okay, so that's about it, uh, uh, the, the course content. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. On the uh, course syllabus, on the timing, uh, everything, anything, if you have any questions, feel free. I'll give a minute and then I'll um, switch gears. Yeah. You can go over this link, okay, in your time. I'm going to paste this in the chat window. You can go over this link and to get the details, what all uh, the things will be covered. Uh, you can just go over that. Okay, so I think we are good. So let me start with, uh, let me just show you, uh, hi, what are the performance testing tools you're going to use in this course? Uh, see, yes, so we are, so this course is not for performance testing, okay? So as part of the DevOps, when I say DevOps, uh, when I say continuous testing in DevOps, right? So we'll be integrating the, we'll be creating the jobs and scheduling the jobs using JMeter, okay? So that will be the part of the uh, continuous testing in DevOps. When I say continuous testing means the testing has to be auto-triggered. Your job, your Jenkins job should be auto-triggered. So we'll be demonstrating using Jenkins, uh, with using JMeter. So there will not be any tools covered in this course. You don't expect that I'll teach you JMeter. You should be aware of that. So this course is not a JMeter course or a testing course. It's about the performance engineering, how to go about creating a job. I'll tell mostly about the Jenkins here, and I'll talk mostly about the jobs here, how to create jobs and how to put some conditions so that your, your job would fail or pass. So I'll talk about that more, not about the JMeter to be clear, okay. But I'll be demonstrating using JMeter. Yeah, uh, okay, if you look at, uh, feel free, yeah. Yeah, hi, um, <clears throat> this is my Yeah, hi Mayesh, hi. yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, so for monitoring the clusters and uh, like uh, yeah. Kubernetes parts and all, yeah. Right. So are we using any monitoring tools for that? Uh, is there any open source? Uh, okay, open source. So we are we are covering here AWS specific course. Okay, AWS specific tool. We have CloudWatch Container Insights. So for in AWS monitoring, we have CloudWatch as the one of the services. If you look at the CloudWatch, we have in general. So CloudWatch helps you to monitor all your resources in. In, in 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 AWS, it's in-house tool by default, and this uh, this container insights. When I say it's 
it's specific to the containers it it monitors the containers container insights when i talk about container insights it talk about the container monitoring and it talks about the kubernetes monitoring as well and it integrates with prometheus okay prometheus is an open source tool you might be aware of that so it integrates with prometheus as well to give you more metrics so we'll be taking up this monitoring tool to, to monitor the kubernetes cluster it's container insights it's aws in-house tool but just know that it, it integrates with prometheus as well to give you more metrics so if you can read about it it integrates with prometheus as well okay so that's that's what it is so prometheus metrics will be also uh, it integrate with prometheus so that's an open source tool to monitor your container uh, so that's how it is we'll be covering container insights yeah okay okay perfect so so one more question is um, yeah. so you are uh, giving demonstration on eks, uh, EKS uh, or yeah, in, exactly. uh, like um, we can use uh, kind or um, another thing also right a mini cube so is there any uh, demonstration with that or uh Kind means see, I'll I'll be demonstrating how to create clusters. See, there are two ways of see, there are two ways of installing Kubernetes. Either you create instances uh, on your own, okay? Uh, you create multiple EC2 instances on your own, and then you install Kubernetes on that. You have you keep one node as the master node and other nodes as the worker nodes, and you can install Kubernetes using Kubeadium way. So that's that's the manual way of installing Kubernetes. But how nowadays all the cloud providers are you leveraging the Kubernetes? Uh, so Kubernetes is an open source tool, you know that. But the cloud providers, how they are leveraging Kubernetes, like suppose AWS, they are they are having EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Okay, they call it Elastic Kubernetes Service. Uh, and then we have uh, 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 Microsoft guys, they call it AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. Okay. And then we have Google, they call it GKE. The uh, Kubernetes is developed from the Google, but they call it GKE, uh, Google Kubernetes Engine. And they have this, all the cloud providers have, have this kind of setup. So they automate a lot of processes. They, we, I'm not going to use Kubeadium to install Kubernetes. There's a different way of installing Kubernetes in EKS. So that I'll be demonstrating. I'll be demonstrating using EKS CTL. Okay. So EKS CTL is the command that uh, first of all I need to set up AWS CLI, and then I need to set up your EKS CTL, and then I need to have Kube CTL installed. So this type of three CT command lines that I need first. And then I can get started by creating cluster using EKCTL command. And once you once you have the cluster ready uh, and the node group ready, means the nodes, worker node and the master node, and, there is a, and manually you can do using Kubeadium. So that we are, I can tell you how to do that, but that we are not using because nowadays all the cloud providers have this kind of uh, services. And they, they, they have this kind of a different way of using because they manage the master node, the control plane, and the worker nodes. I, as a user, I'm responsible only for creating the ports and the services, the applications, and how to how to configure those ports and services so that we have the auto scaling setup for the ports and the for the cluster. So that's what we will be doing, and we'll be monitoring as part of the performance engineers. So, so this is the way to create clusters. So I'll be demonstrating EKS. So that's the AWS way of implement implementing Kubernetes services, and that will be using these two these three command lines. So I'll be demonstrating a lot of deal using kubectl. Okay. So if if I have to just tell you that what all how many things are we covered? I hope I answered your question, right, Mahesh? Yeah, 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 got it. So you are covering EK service uh, deeply. EKS. Yeah, EKS, yes, yes. Yes, and, and uh, if you if you look at this particular drive here, you will understand that what all you'll be getting at the end of the day. Uh, suppose this is the current. Um, if you so, if we talk about the cloud computing, so uh, you'll be these things will be shared with you uh, when when you'll be uh, in a closed group and will when you'll be joining. So you you can just see the number of the the slides here is like around 150 slides. Okay, 
172 slash only for the cloud computing that will be covering in three weeks so everything is detailed everything is documented so you will have something to refer also and it's from very basics and that's how uh, it's been all the uh, other topics are designed if you, if you talk about the kubernetes so let me open the kubernetes uh, particular slide contain orchestration engine so you have almost here hundreds more than 100 slides here so covering everything okay so if i uh, 108 slides you have it here so and this would this would take around uh, two to three weeks of time two weeks for sure this particular kubernetes to understand and we'll be all be doing everything we'll be understanding in each and out about the kubernetes so everything will be discussed in detail that's why we need eight weeks of time to cover this much of course and we need your passion uh, as well okay so you shouldn't anyone should not be getting bored after uh, three weeks or four weeks they, so you need to practice we'll have just one hour every day you need to go and understand and practice if you do not understand or if you need any clarification we'll have a whatsapp group on the very first uh, time first thing that we take up is your questions and then we start up with the next topic so that's how we go about uh, all the this this journey okay so that's how the things are done here yeah. oh, okay any more questions feel free uh, that's your time to understand about this course uh, that's the best time because once once we'll start with the main thing uh, it will be yeah we'll be starting up main thing very quickly here I'll give a minute uh, for you to think and feel free to ask me ask me any question, whatever you have. So. so these are the Linux command that we'll be using for our cell scripting. Uh, cell scripting, it's very important skill set. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be learning how to do cell scripting. Okay, so. Okay, I think we, we are all good here. So let me start with one of my topics. First topic. Uh, let me take this cloud computing as well to start up with. Okay. Okay. So actually we are starting today. Okay. Uh, so it's not a demonstration. Actually, we are starting today because we are done with the course of uh, syllabus and all the things. I can also cover that one let me cover one more thing before i get started uh let me cover uh what you will be learning out of this course uh the we are the the level of detail that we are covering in cloud you can very much attend a uh, cloud practitioner and solution architect associate exam uh you'll be good to understand and after just after a few brush up of things uh to understanding just here and there you can definitely write your cloud practitioner and solution architect exam uh, I'm myself solution architect, so I know that what I'm covering. And uh, uh, so the, I'm covering the major important things. The VPC is the most important, complicated stuff to understand. If you understand VPC, virtual private cloud, how the networking works, what is this public subnet, what's private subnet, uh, what is the security group? Uh, if you have, under, so that's that's what, what is the CIDR? So that's where the, the entire concept is. So if you understand VPC, that rest thing would be very simple. We are covering around 20 to 25 AWS services. So you'll be very much comfortable with AWS that I can assure you. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's the link I have already shared. Uh, you can go over this link if you uh, want to go over in this detail. Okay. So let me get started today. Okay. So this, this is our first topic, cloud. Uh, computing that we take up and we take up AWS here. Okay, and then this is the core course topic that we'll be covering in here. We'll, today we'll be mostly taking up the cloud computing introduction. Okay, and why this cloud computing is required and, and what is cloud computing. Okay, uh, so they mostly will we'll try to uh, take up these three topics today because we have some, uh, some somewhere around 20 minutes. Okay, and rest of the topics we can take up on another, another day next day so when i say data center okay <clears throat> so what do we mean by data center so that's the first thing 
uh, that that one I'm, going to, I'm going to introduce you to understand or imagine a building. Okay, Im imagine a building, a bigger space, a land. Someone has to acquire this land, a purchase this land, and they have to construct this entire infrastructure, this building, with this cooling mechanism setup. And they have to put these many servers, a lot of servers, uh, full of rooms. All the rooms, all this building is full of servers like this. And it produces a lot of heat. Okay, these many servers, when they are turned on 24 by 7, okay, they produce a lot of heat and they need to have a cooling mechanism set up. Okay, so this is what we are calling about the data center. So when I say data center, imagine a building like this with these many servers, a lot of servers, okay. What is this cloud computing mean, okay? So basically, uh, cloud computing, uh, if, you, if you understand this part of the diagram that we have covered yesterday also, so this is, this is how our enterprise IT, legacy IT works. Uh, we someone in back in 1980s, right? If someone wanted to a bigger a bigger company wanted to have an application running, if they want to launch their website or their company website, they would they would need to have this kind of setup, data center. You might have heard of this word data center. They need to purchase a, a lot of land, a building, and a lot of servers. A lot of cost was involved. Okay, a lot of cost was involved in setting this up you can imagine right uh, a, a lot of cost is required and then they can have networking on top of data centers inside the data centers they can have networking setup storage a lot of servers for storage uh, servers different kinds of service servers like application server web server database servers uh, they need to have virtualization software to create vms right and then they they need to purchase a lot of operating systems a lot of databases depending on their requirement. And then for the security region, they, so for the security purpose, they have to do a lot of coding and a lot of uh, arrangements for that. And then they can have the application running. So a lot of cost was involved in the case of on-prem infrastructure, on-prem and cloud. Those are two buzzwords. When I say on-prem and cloud, only difference that I am pointing is that when I say on-prem, I am owning this. I own this complete data center. And I'm calling it as on-prem, on-premise. This is on-prem. Uh, this is my premise. So that is on-premise for me. If AWS purchases this, if, if AWS or Azure or G Google Cloud owns this building, and I'm if I'm asking them, can I use your server? Can I use your server to host my application? Can I use your now, this server, that server, can I use your resources? Let's call that those as resources. Can I use your resources to host my application? That becomes a cloud service for me. The building is same, server is same. If I own it, that becomes on-prem. If I'm not owning any of these things, I'm just asking some something for rent. I'm not uh, rent only, okay? I'm not purchasing the resources, okay? I'm just asking for rent. Can I can I can I host my application? And I will pay you this much of amount uh, till the time I'm hosting my application. So that became an on-prem infrastructure, on-prem service for me, a cloud service for me. Sorry. Uh, when I'm hosting my application on these servers, that became a cloud service for me. When I own this, that that's an on-prem. So that's the basic difference. Okay. People get confused. What this on-prem? What is this cloud? That's that's in five minutes, I just got this covered. If you, you were struggling with this, so that's the concept of on-prem and cloud. If I own the data center, that is my premise that, that if I if I'm deploying the application there, that's on-prem. If I don't own anything, I don't, I don't have this AWS, someone else, AWS, Amazon or Microsoft or Google owns this complete infrastructure. And I'm asking, can I use your resources and I'll pay you this much of rent? on that behalf, that, that becomes a cloud service for me. And yesterday I told you that I can have, uh, as, part, as part of the service models, I did explain you that I can use cloud service as an infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or software as a service, depends again on my requirement. So I can use, I can leverage the cloud, I can make use of the cloud 
for these kind of services, either infrastructure services where I get to control of a lot of resources here. Uh, when I'm going for infrastructure as a service, there will be a deal between the cloud provider and you that you want to use this many resources from them and you'll be paying over some, some amount on monthly basis or usage basis. Mostly it is, it is on usage basis. If if not, I, I, I can, I'm open to go, I can use the cloud service as a platform as a service. I can just I just want to host my application and you have to provide me all these things that there will be a deal between the customer and the cloud provider. I'm just going to host my application, develop my application, and you just need to provide me all other things. So how much will you charge? So that, that I need to talk to the cloud provider again. I will not do anything. You provide me everything. You provide me everything. That's the software service for you. You means cloud provider. So provider managed, cloud provider. So cloud provider is managing everything on your behalf. That's the software service for you. The best example is your Gmail, your YouTube. Uh, you are using them as a service, right? You are you are least bothered where they are, where these media files are hosted, where your servers are, which region, where is your data center, you are least bothered. You are just using the software as a service. I'm using Google slide right now, Google slide, <clears throat> right? So I'm least bothered about the underlying infrastructure. So that's the underlying infrastructure for me. I am just using as a service. Uh, if I, if I, if I'm there, there are many sites, right? <clears throat> where I get to code my application. I can write my Java code and run it. I can, I can code my, I can write my Python code and run it. So I can, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I have, I'm asking for the runtime environment as well from the data cloud provider. I'm just using the entire service to develop my application. I don't own, I'm not owning anything. I don't need to install anything. They have to provide Java runtime or Python runtime or any other runtime. So they have to take care of all the underlying infrastructure and the runtime environment. And I'm just building my code. I'm just writing my code. I'm developing my, I get to develop my code. So if, if that is my requirement, I can go for platform as a service. If my requirement is that, no, I, I want to uh, host my, I am a bigger client. I have a very important person. Uh, I, have, I own a very important application. Let me not give databases and security and operating system access to them, cloud provider. They should not interfere with, interfere with these things. Let me own these things. As a customer, I can own these things. So customer managed and these things will be managed by the cloud provider. Then I am using cloud as the infrastructure as a service. I'll pay uh, some amount to them that there will be a contract there. So that's called, there are three ways I can leverage the cloud provider. So I hope you understood right about the on-prem and this is on-prem where I am, I am owning everything. When I, once I own everything, I can do whatever I want, right? I'm owning everything. I put a lot of uh, cost, a lot of cost is involved here. That's the on-prem for you. And these are the three cloud services that you can uh, use. There's something called DAS as, as well coming, database as a service. Leave, leave that as of now, just popular are these three. So database as a service is, you can understand, the entire database would be hosted and you will just hit the query and it will be returned. And you're, uh, so leave that as of now. So consider this infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service, three service models. Okay, you can write this, you can understand the benefits here. Okay. So that's about this cloud computing. If you have understood this, this things are very simple. The uh, main thing is to understand the concept part, the high level, and the rest thing would, would, would fall in place. Okay, so before cloud computing scenario, uh, customers owning all the hardware and other components in their data centers to run applications or programs, right? What is cloud computing? Cloud computing allows people access to the same kinds of application through the internet. Uh, my database, my data center is somewhere else. Okay, let me show you one example here. Let, this is my is AWS console, okay? There are so many regions, they have their data centers, okay? Uh, so many regions, they have it. In one region, they have multiple data centers. These, the currently, they have these many regions, okay? A lot of regions are there. 
okay and each region has multiple data centers i can host my application anywhere i want okay anywhere sitting in bangalore sitting in anywhere any part in the world i can host my application in that data center so that's the flexibility i'm talking about in cloud services that's the benefit if suppose i'm developing my application and the application happens to be used mostly by the us people or european people or australian people i would select my region accordingly when i select my region basically i am creating a server there if i'm creating a server if suppose if my customer base is australian or european let's say european people and i can set up my server in any of the european countries suppose my customer base is ireland i can create my server i can host my application in the ireland data center so that the the they will they would get the best of response time and the throughput right so and being in somewhere remotely so accessing the resources over the internet that's the cloud computing that's the power of cloud computing i am not going to set up a data center in ireland i'm not going there though my i am thinking about developing an application to be used by the european people but i i, I need not go to europe and set up one data center there being remotely connected i can do that so that's the power of cloud computing so i hope you understood this part uh, and considering that part we can just uh, go over understanding few more stuff here uh, yeah roshan just your previous yeah. uh, uh, this uh, thing that you uh, said right without sitting yeah. in uh, ireland you can uh, uh, you, you can have servers on your cloud so basically Correct. if your cloud servers are located not in ireland they are located in us uh, so and but you still want to have your servers located in ireland but then you have to see whether the cloud provider is providing the service services in that con that country or not at that region or not right yeah see again i can have multi region setup also multiple data you centers can have, you can have yeah. multiple regions but that particular it should be there in that particular country it should support that particular country right if that is your requirement yes uh, currently i have these regions okay i have these mm -hmm. regions but but it's not like Uh, suppose if you're selecting uh, if selecting frankfurt currently this this particular ec2 instance i have created in frankfurt region okay in in one of the data centers okay i have created this so it doesn't mean that i am i am getting a very bad response time being in bangalore no it's i am i'm able to access and do everything from here but this exact server this ec2 instance is hosted in the frankfurt region very far from me but it's not like I, if i host one application i get a very bad response time because they have aws have a concept of pop points of presence as well they call it cloud front so since i am in india they would they would have suppose if i'm accessing one website okay so they and and my content is in europe my website content is in europe and if my if a, if a customer in india is accessing my application and they will read the applications how they are accessing in it and all and what they would do they would move the content which are which are of which which are often oftenly being accessed by the uh, indian people to nearby cloud front pop so that i would get the best of response time i every time when i hit my application my my response will not come from the frankfurt it would come from the nearby pop so okay, they so have this concept the, you are talking about the cdn content delivery CDN, network current content delivery network yes pop sure. they this called these are called cloud fronts as well yes i'm talking yeah. about that yeah okay. so we have this kind of also this kind of setup and as well and mostly these content delivery network they store static data for faster exactly. and exactly exactly you are right you are right tanisha absolutely right. exactly you are right so so that every time if i hit one if i if i am expecting some some sort of response from the server every time my my response should not travel my request and response should not travel every time from frankfurt it will create a delay which may not be visible to the eyes but it will create a delay because it has to travel that far 
So that's why the CDN concept, cloud front concept. Yeah. So we have those kind of things as well. Okay. So I'm just introducing this. The, this what is this cloud computing means? I'm I'm getting to access everything over the internet. Uh, accessing, uh, having the access of the entire application through the internet. Uh, being in India, I can host my application anywhere in the world means they, they should have just region there or a data center. Even if they not have, they have the POPs also. So if you look at, let me just uh, talk to you about that since I mentioned about POP and those details, let me just go over that. Currently, uh, so, okay. So currently they have 77 data centers, they call it AZs and 24 regions. And they have 217 POPs as well. Uh, is that 244 where is that content delivery? 205 age locations, 217 points of presence. So you can imagine that they have this much of points of presence as well. Uh, this this you, you see these blue dots here, these are edge locations. And the uh, these are the, the, the orange circles, they, these are the regions, okay, regional edge cases. So they have they have covered the entire world. That's why AWS is that popular. They 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 cover. They take the one third of the entire market share. Uh, and, ne and next is Azure. So that's why. And they have released quite early, 2008, AWS. And they have maximum of the services. That's why they have the maximum connectivity. Uh, and that's why people uh, tend to use more AWS than any other cloud provider. Okay, so just a tangent. I just took one tangent there. So, so, so that's the cloud computing for you. Okay, I'm accessing the any any server, accessing any resource over the internet. That's the cloud computing. Okay, why do we need that? You can imagine now, right? I don't need to pay this much of amount of money to set up my on-premise environment. I don't have to purchase a land. I don't have to construct a building. I don't have to purchase the uh, servers at cooling mechanism, nothing. Security guards, I have to do a lot of things to take care of my data center servers, right? Because the important information are hosted there. I need to make sure that uh, it's safe and secure. So a lot of investment is required. Now, if I'm using cloud services, I, I, I have not to go to that route. I get to save a lot of uh, money, right? If a cost reduction is huge use that's why uh, people even the startups can st any any new startup small companies can start their application they can they host their application easily uh, paying very less okay uh, comparatively very less okay they have to pay uh, scalability again a scalability when i say it's like on demand uh, suppose you are using five servers as of now load increased suppose it's a black friday you have you have a retail application you have some some sales going on okay and uh, and and, it, and all of a sudden the load increased okay you can set up load balancer and an auto scaling group that we are covering as, as part of this course and automatically you will be provisioning servers to accommodate that extra user load user would not even feel that the application is slow or any issues from the individual perspective and you would pay one for the extra resources that you have provision only you would pay only for that duration you don't have to purchase those extra resources because that will be that would happen only a few times in a year right that the so much of spike comes right for amazon black friday or uh, christmas or new year during those time they have this highest peak so they make sure that they have enough resources enough servers to accommodate that many user load that's why their application never hangs almost it like it never is 100 percent even google was down for some time that that happens okay but that's that's how they they can take care of extra load they can scale up very easily and any any customer will any customer will be paying uh, if I'm using a cloud service only for that duration, for those extra resources that I have provisioned. So very scalability is very easy and I pay as per I use. Okay, I suppose I have five servers always running for my normal load. 
and for just two hours i can have in a day 10 servers so i am not owning all those 10 servers I'm, and i'm paying for extra five for just for two hours right so i saved a lot um, amount right so scalability and it will scale automatically that's why we call it cloud is elastic right disaster recovery so suppose you have hosted your application in one of the data center we call it az's by the way uh, in aws world data center is called availability zone az az okay so suppose you have hosted one application in one of the data center and you can have for disaster recovery you can have your data your application hosted somewhere else also in some other other region so that even if or some other data center so that even if one of the data center goes down for any natural calamity calamity or anything earthquake your application is still available okay you can have that sort of thing in in cloud and you and you don't have to purchase everything it's on it's on rent and uh, data security they take care they take care of your data security for sure they have a lot of uh, things to take and your application can be secured they have iam first line of defense is your iam second your security group for at the ec2 level then at the subnet level you have on one more security that, that called acl access control list nacl network access control list so a lot of we'll talk about that when we'll talk about vpc okay a lot of securities are there uh, so they take care of all these things automatic software updates you don't have to do it uh, if you have any patches and all so everything is well well under control a lot of benefits here in cloud computing okay so that's about it okay okay so we have just touched the basics today if you have understood if if anyone joined here if you have if things were new to you if you even never understood cloud computing before i hope you understood today uh, that's the take home for today uh, if you have any questions any doubt if uh, please let me know uh, because we'll be wind up other on the sessions i uh, will not be stretching for any long today and from next day we'll be continuing with our cloud computing other details okay uh, we'll be talking these things are basics in two to three days we'll cover the basics and then we'll hit up the main aws services uh, called ec2 and iam we'll do budget setup we'll create our account and we'll start practicing everything deploying our application and we'll start understanding all the things of aws okay okay so that's all about it today guys uh, so that's the cloud computing introduction for you yeah thank you everyone Oh, so Ra Roshan, so Monday we sure. will be starting on uh, uh, in details about this, the first uh, uh, section, the cloud computing, AWS and everything. Yeah, so that's the, just two slides I covered here. That was okay. the syllabus, the entire topics. I mm -hmm. just covered data center and these two slides I have covered out of 157 slides, whatever the number was. So oh. two, two slides I just covered. So you can understand, we'll just, we'll go on with this. Uh, so we have started today we have started with the topic and we'll go on from here yeah okay next session and uh, you'll be notified uh, if 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 you are in the whatsapp group you will be notified about the next session yeah one and, more thing roshan sure sure uh, sure this yeah, yeah this aws thing actually uh, we have a requirement like you know we need to spin up instances using terraform so it, yeah. uh, could you please yeah could you please just spend some time on that as well yeah we can do that but just to let you know terraform is again a third party okay hmm. third party like jenkins and in aws we have a service called cloud called cloud formation okay i know i know i know uh, that i know but i don't know for, for what reason in our my in my uh, organization they want to use terraform and then run the jobs to jenkins terraform is very popular their terraform is yeah. very popular and uh, it's it's widely used i can tell you brief about that but to reach there yeah. it will take some time uh, sure, sure. Because... that's not a problem that's not a problem i just wanted that you know uh, you can just uh, have some i can brief you I can, I can brief you about that to get you started Yes, yes. Uh, but but that's but to reach you at that point that will take some time because yeah, yeah, i need to cover fine. i need to cover a lot of things before that to make to 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 even introduce about cloud formation sure okay. sure yeah yeah that's that's sure, that's sure. okay that's
Sure, sure, thank you. Tomorrow, do we have the session? I'll, as, as I mentioned, right, uh, if you're in the WhatsApp group, so don't worry, you'll be notified. You'll not miss your session. And for, for any more details, please contact Kumar, sir. Okay, so you can talk to Kumar uh, here. So that's the number. Okay, it's it's always in the site website here. Uh, talk to him. He's the right guy who will tell you when the, when the next session. So yeah, Mr. Kumar. Yeah. Okay, so that's the topic that we introduced today. I hope you guys some learned something today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I'll stop the recording now. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye.